Well, hi, and welcome to our Leveraging Your Voice podcast, where I provide guests the opportunity to share their message, passion, and service, and help them to leverage their voice. Today, we have a special guest with us, Jennifer White. Jennifer, welcome. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me, Paul. Awesome. Glad you're with us. Now, we know each other just a little bit, and we were chit-chatting a little bit before, but before we get anything going about you and your business and all that sort of thing, tell me where you're sitting at, because it's an interesting little story. Are you at home? Are you out in the park? Where? And I did interview one person who was in the park, and people were jogging by in the background, which was kind of interesting. But where are you at? Nice. So I'm actually at a co-working space right here in Carmel, Indiana. And our team works out of this co-working space. So when we get together two or three times a week, we meet at a co-working space and we do our work and then we go home. So, awesome. but today I sent my team home and I get to stay here and spend time with you. Well, it looks like a great spot. You got a window to look inside. So you're not like locked in a basement or anything. So that part's good. Yep, it's great. There's two kitchens here. There's lots of meeting rooms and it's right downtown Carmel. So it's close to the... Our Monon Trail if we want to go take a walk during a break or something like that. So it's a great location. Very cool. Now, I was on your Facebook page earlier today, and while you're there in Carmel, Indiana, on your Facebook set page, it said you're a Michigan girl. So I'm sitting here thinking, what are you doing in Indiana? Because you're a Michigan girl. I am a Michigan girl. So I grew up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, born and raised there. And um, actually was there last week visiting a friend and doing some work while I was there. And I miss it because, I don't know, just growing up there, we went kayaking in a lake because every mile there's a lake in Michigan, which is not the same here in Indiana. But um, I went to Purdue and graduated from Purdue and met my husband, got married, ended up here. And then my family, my mom, my dad, and eventually my sister actually all moved here. So I'm a Michigan girl living in Indiana, at least for a while. At least for a while. <laughs> and you're a magnet. I'm a magnet. Bringing all your family. Bringing everybody. Yes. yes. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't forget yeah. that part. That's a very important part. It demonstrates how wonderful you are. Oh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your business and who you help and what you do for them. I think your business is called Five and Rise. Is that correct? It is. It's called Five and Rise Marketing Solutions. And we help our clients and customers elevate brand awareness and ignite their growth. Awesome. Elevate brand awareness. Now, yep. brand is a subject we could talk about forever and ever and ever. Absolutely. Tell me a few highlights that you like to just think as the most important things about brand awareness? I think, honestly, one of the most important things that people need to consider when they're doing anything to promote their brand, talk about their brand, is to be completely authentic. Um, why they do what they do, why they love what they do, and that's what they need to share because that's how people become, as you called me a magnet, right? I think that's how people become attracted to the people that they do business with because they vet them online or they get a referral. But really, if you're authentic with that, then people trust you and they want to do business with you. So that's the most important thing. Okay. Now I'm going to follow your branding suggestion. Okay. Because at the beginning, I forgot to say who I am, didn't I? You talked about your podcast, but I don't know that you introduced yourself. See that? Now, that was a branding mistake. <laughs> so now I'm going to fix that. I'm Paul Rackwoods with PR Vocal Coaching. Now, I might have said that earlier, but if not, I'm making a point. You're going to help everybody with their branding, meaning not just branding, but how to apply their branding in their activities with their business. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So... Once so someone you, like me doing a podcast, you would make sure that I'm branding somewhere along the way, sharing my brand. Right. Absolutely. So people know who you are, where to find you, how they can listen, and then they can become part of your universe. See, now I invited you on secretly just so I could get some tips on my brand and for free and make sure I love it. doing it right. I love That's it. That's my secret. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so now, what is your website? Just so people know, what's the website address so they know how to get to you? Sure, it's five, the number five, right? And, A-N-D, rise.com. So five and rise.com. Now on that page, when people go there, they're going to see moving pictures. They are. Now that's different than many websites. Just talk about why they're going to see that on your website. It's actually something that we just added to our website. We've been doing some iteration to our website. We still have a few things to do, but we actually took some video footage or B-roll footage of our team doing some things, working, and we took that footage and put it together to do a video. And I like to see video or some kind of motion that draws people into your website so that they can get an idea of who they're working with, what they're doing, and they spend a little bit more time on your website to look around. And I think that it's an invitation to spend a little time. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now on that video, is there sound or no sound on that opening video there? There is no sound to the actual video, but we actually do have another um, element there that is also motion where it looks like it's a search engine, a search bar and you put in, it, it does it for it. But if you turn up the volume, you might hear the typing of somebody like typing into that search bar, um, but there's not really sound. And there doesn't have to always be sound, right? It's just that motion that draws you in. It could be moving pictures. It could be um, some kind of a graphical element that draws you in, right? It doesn't, but I just like the idea of motion because it keeps people's eyes on your page. All right, now you've been doing marketing for more than a year or two. Talk yeah. a little bit about your past and what brought you to where you're at today with Five and Rise. Sure. I have been in the marketing space for 30 plus years. I don't like to say that because I don't want people to know how old I actually am. Well, you're 39 am. or 29, right? There oh, you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an elementary school thing, which actually is kind of true. I actually have always liked marketing. I was either going to go into marketing in college or I was going to be some kind of um, go into sports athletic training or something like that because I've always, I like sports too. I have a passion for sports and marketing. Um, went the marketing marketing route. And I've worked for corporate um, companies in a marketing capacity, worked for Fortune 100 company, um, and then also agencies. I've also worked in agencies. So I've had a broad experience in the marketing world. And then about, I don't know, two or three years ago, I actually decided to go into consulting. My boys were a little bit older, had the opportunity to work with a few companies I could travel to them. They weren't actually here in Indiana. And so I took that opportunity. And from that, that grew. And then the size of companies that we were working with, we were working with a lot of seated or funded startup companies, and they weren't quite ready to bring in their own marketing team. So we would build their strategy. I would act as a fractional CMO for them, work with, um, their team, but they weren't quite ready to bring in like four or five, eight people to run their marketing. And so they would ask me, okay, now that we have our strategy, what do we do next? Who do we contact? We can't really afford to hire anybody yet. And so we came in and filled that gap. And so we ended up starting a full service marketing agency. And so here we are a year and a half later. That's pretty cool. And the customers that you've had in Five and Rise, do you have any particular success story you can share with us of someone you helped from some terrible place like me who doesn't introduce themselves in their podcast to some great way of always connecting with their audience or some sort of story? Yeah. So we work with a variety of different clients. I think one of the clients that um, most recently that we've worked with quite a bit is a company out in um, Los Angeles, and they are a real estate um, investment firm that we've been working with for quite a while. And they came to us kind of a small company and they had been doing some multifamily real estate investment and um, multifamily syndication. And they decided that they really wanted to up-level their brand and become bigger, right? Be available to more people outside of Southern California, 
teach people and share why people should be investing in Southern California real estate, but on a larger scale. So we actually worked with them for quite a while, put together their entire brand from A to Z, really. So we we created the new logo for them. We created a new website for them. Um, we set up all of their social media um took care of all their digital assets. And then we also created collateral for them from a printed standpoint. So, you know, we have the digital and then we have traditional print brochures, things like that, um, direct marketing pieces, put that together. And then um, we also did some paid advertising for them across Google and the meta um, social ads. And then from there, we actually started growing their business, generating leads for them. And just recently, they started a, an actual investment fund. So instead of doing one-off syndication investment deals, they were actually able to put together um, a fund where actually people could buy into the fund and then they could take the fund and and actually be able to invest across. So their goal is to raise $20 million in this fund, mm -hmm. but it's really interesting to see a small company go from, um, you know, a small, they're still a small company, but they have actually kind of grown and scaled what their offering is to the world. So that's a really great story about the impact you can have on a company. Copywriting, where does that fit into the marketing world and where does that fit into Five and Rise? So we, oops, I, sorry, I grabbed my ear thing. And I apologize if it went dark. That's this is an eco-friendly co-working space. And so there's not a lot of movement. And so the lights actually just turned off. So I don't know if I wait. We can still see you. <laughs> so you're going to be safe. But that is so, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So um, copywriting comes in in really everything that we do, right? From putting together your brand, your mission, your vision, your value statement, your who and do what statement for those that are part of the BYS or BDC world that might be watching this. Um, I, that's really important. So we actually do that and a lot of the strategy that we're doing. And then we can actually get more specific based on if we're putting together a brochure, what does that look like? And what type of copy do we need for that? We need copy on our website. We need copy for ads that we might be running. And so that is something that we do here as part of our team. Sometimes we will actually outsource or bring in a contractor if we need something that, if we're doing a white paper for somebody or if we're doing some kind of a lead magnet for a healthcare company or something like that, we might bring somebody in to help us with, um, with putting that together too. It just depends on where we're at, but it's a big part of everything that we do from a marketing standpoint for sure. That makes sense. And then do you literally build the websites for your clients? We do. Okay. We do. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, do you have a tool that you like to use or do you use a number of different tools to build the website? Some of some of the folks like a particular thing and that's what they generally use. Yeah, typically, curious. yeah. So typically when we build a website, we build it on the WordPress platform. Mm -hmm. um, WordPress is probably one of the oldest website platforms that are, is around. And a, there are a lot of new up and coming different platforms that you can use that I think are probably a little bit more user friendly for those that are building their own website. But from an SEO standpoint and trying to get the best reach for clients, we always go back to WordPress. And there's a lot of different builders that you can incorporate into WordPress. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a little bit easier to use, a little bit easier to manage, and we can do some really fun things with it to make that WordPress not feel so old. Um, so that's the platform that we use on every site that we build. Awesome. Now, in the old days, we used to build websites with 400 pages. <laughs> I don't know if you remember those days, but uh, what kind of, I think today we're trying to not do that. And we're trying mm -hmm. to make websites that are much easier. What's your thoughts on that? I'm assuming you agree, yeah, an easier website than 400 deep pages where it's 37 clicks to the item you need is probably not the best thing anymore. Yeah, it depends. I, actually, we work with a mortgage company out of Detroit area. Um, and they did, uh, we did not build their website, but one of the things that they did speaking of 400 pages is in order to reach Google search, there's a lot of different things that you need to do from an SEO perspective. And they wanted to appear number one, 
across the country because they reach they reach um country right nationwide not just in michigan or the midwest and they actually built 200 pages on the back end for seo but we as somebody just going to their website don't see all those pages because they're hidden Mm. right it's a it's kind of an seo tool but i would say to people if you're building a website that you want to make sure i mean you're typically going to have five pages right you're going to have a page talking about you're going to have a home page you're going to have a page to talk about you your story your you might have a, a page for your team you might have a contact page and then you might have a services page right so you're going to have really five pages and then from there if you want to add a few more pages maybe talking about each of your services if you want to talk about your social media presence or some different things that you're doing if you want to do case studies or things like that then you can add that um to it we just actually built um for those again in in the um, BDC, they'll know him, but we just built Dr. Pascal, David Pascal's website. We just launched that for him last week. And it was one where we took a website that was kind of hard to navigate and we made it a little bit easier to navigate and for people to find the things that they wanted to find. And I think that's the other thing is that you want to keep as much information as you can share about what you're offering, but you also want to do it in a simplistic way so that it's easy to find things. So that's all good. I like taking a website that's hard to navigate and making it easier. Mm-hmm. I think that's a key, a big yeah. key. Now, what's your position on a blog on a website? Do you still believe that people should have a blog and put articles on there or whatever might be going on there? I do. I think it's important, especially if you're trying to create reach. And again, blogs are always a good source of increasing your SEO when people find you or they Google you. I think that's always good. Um, Video is also a huge thing. I think it's important to have a combination of video and uh, blog articles. And if you're doing any kind of press or interviews or those kinds of things, I think you want to have a media page because again, those are ways that people can find you and it increases your reach when you're when somebody's Googling you. So I think all of that's important to have. As a matter of fact, that's one thing that we just added to our website that we hadn't done is we recently added, I think, 25 or 30 articles on marketing to put on our website so that people could come, again, spend a little bit more time on your website, learning about what you do, but also allowing them to find out information about something that they're interested in, right? If somebody wants to figure out how many hashtags should we use or how many emojis should we use in an email title or a subject line when we put that out, right? We have a blog article for that and they can come search it and get some information and hopefully they'll remember us when they need more work. Yeah, that's a great use of a blog. Of a blog and I do that same sort of thing with my blog. All right, short form or long form in written blog posts? I think it's a combination. Most of ours are long form. I would say, I think ours are probably four to 600 words. But if it's something that you can share pretty succinctly, as long as it has some good keywords when people try to search you, um, I think short form is fine too. Just like video, right? You can do long form video and you can do short form video and put those up there as well. Okay, so someone's watching this video and we have the fabulous Jennifer White talking about all marketing things and they wanna ask the question, how do I do my video? Should I do four hour videos? Should I do 30 minute videos? Should I do five second? Where am I supposed to be at with all of the video talk? So what's your answer to that? It depends on what you're using your video I for. knew you were gonna start with it depends. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. Go ahead. It, de- it depends on what you're using your video for, right? So if you are trying to create video content, and you want to take that content and you want to cut it up into micro clips and put it out on social media, you could film for an hour. You could film for four hours if you wanted to, and and it could just go on forever. And then we can take that forever reel that you send to us. And then I have our team go ahead and go through it, cut it up into micro clips. We give them back to you um, or we post them for you on your social media. We actually go ahead. I know you're waiting to ask me a question, so. (laughs) Well, I wanted to say, I did a podcast with somebody who works with you and they sent the podcast to you to make, get clips made. 
They did. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Yep. Who they ever did. knew? How about yeah. that? Okay, keep going. I just had to yeah. tell you that. No, that's okay. Um, it's interesting because we're working with a partnership um here and we're working with some students, and we actually gave a presentation on video over the weekend where we taught them how to create a sizzle reel for the product that they're pitching. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a group of kids that are putting together products and want to become entrepreneurs and they actually get the opportunity to pitch them to potential, um, investors, you know, venture capitalists. And so we actually went in and showed them and we actually created one while we were teaching them. So we had an hour presentation and we actually showed them how to do it, um, went through all of the steps. And then we also created one in the process and presented that to them. So there's the sizzle reel, right? It's usually a 45 to 60 second video. And it it is really kind of showcasing your product or your brand or you, if you are your product or brand. And it's just kind of a fast paced video that gives people an idea of what you're doing and also elicit some kind of emotion. Is it like the old explainer videos? It's not really an explainer video. It's okay. more of, um, and you can do it. You can use all B-roll and you can do some voiceover over it. You can have some fun action-packed music, but you want to make sure that from that you can get an idea and it evokes emotion through all of your senses, right? One of the, the uh, examples that we did, we did a um, sizzle reel slash commercial for a local restaurant here. No talking in it at all. We took a bunch of B-roll throughout the restaurant where they were cooking and they were serving drinks. They were creating drinks. People were having fun, a girl's night, doing a cheers, those kinds of things. We put all of those into a 45 or 60 second video. And that allowed people to, you know, hear the sizzle of the food and, you know, get an idea of, wow, what would that smell like if I was actually at the restaurant and how fun it is, right? So, um, so it doesn't have to be any kind of like interview or talking, but those are other kinds of videos, right? So if you did an interview similar to what we're doing right now, this is a really good interview style video and it's probably going to be what 20 to 30 minutes something like that by the time it gets um edited and clipped and shared with the world so it's a different type of form of video and then um you know there's action videos or emotional videos or brand videos which is a combination of all where you have um the the person or the face of the brand talking about the brand while you're also showing what is the team doing, or um, you might show them where their office is located or like different things. And you can rather be roll about them and tell their story. And those brand videos are typically about two and a half to three minutes as well. So it just depends. Well, videos are fun to talk about. And in what I do, I help professionals speak with confidence. And one of the areas that we all have trouble speaking with confidence is in front of the camera. Absolutely. So I know the sorts of things that I do with people to speak well in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to your clients about being better in front of the camera? Because I'm sure you've met some of your clients at a place where they're not, let's say they're just a little stiff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you, what, what kinds of things do you think about talking with them about to try and help them through that part of it? You know, it's interesting because uh, a lot of times people will ask us or they have a fear of going in front of the camera. Me too. I do too. Like it might take me, I might be trying to do a clip for social media and it might take me 20 takes to feel like I got it right. But I do think that we all we all kind of deal with that challenge a little bit when we're doing especially social media. I think one of the things that I share with people is again, we kind of go back to be authentic. People don't care. They want to see your authentic self. So don't worry about whether your teeth are white enough or if your hair looks good, or if you like people want to see what you're doing in the everyday. So I think that that's part of it. Um, I think that you have to be relaxed. I think that you come across better with more ease if you can be relaxed or at least act like you are relaxed, right? Um, 
enunciate those kinds of things. But I'll be honest with you, Paul, I may be calling you one of these days because if we're doing a brand video or if we're helping somebody produce a podcast and, and sharing with them how they should do it, uh, we will bring in a producer or somebody to help them or coach them like a media coach. So somebody like yourself, or we work with another person also in Michigan um, that has helped a couple of our clients as we're putting some things together. So that's another thing that we'll do, bring in an expert. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome. And one of the things that I always think about in my coaching is I don't want to teach people to say, speak like I do. Mm -hmm. or I don't want to teach them to speak like you do. I want them to find their unique voice mm -hmm. and be able to share their unique voice with their world. So to Absolutely. me, that's really the essence of the coaching is there's a lot of technical things to learn about how to use your voice. Mm -hmm. But if we learn all the technical things and we look like we're acting, it's still not us. We ha I still haven't done the right thing for them. Right. So that's always what I'm aiming for is I want to see them be who they are. Yeah, I completely understand that. And I think sometimes having somebody like you available to coach or even just be present in the moment with them gives them um, a feeling that they're more at ease, which then allows them to actually use their authentic voice, right? Allows them to show who they are versus really worrying or being stiff about producing something. So a lot of people feel comfortable doing things in front of the camera by themselves because they can do 20 takes. But sometimes when you're doing it in front of somebody, it becomes easier because you actually are more relaxed. Right. Right. All right. Now you had said 20 and 30 minutes and I got a little timer here and we're going to be at closer to the 30 minutes, but that's okay. Because we're having a great conversation. We're having a great conversation. Before we get to the end, I want to ask you, all the marketing things that we do and all the video things we do, one of the co big concepts nowadays is doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. So is Five and Rise doing a podcast or will you be doing a podcast? Talk to us about that. Actually, we are. I have been working on potentially doing a podcast for probably a year and a half and I continue to get interrupted. But we actually have a podcast that we're launching probably the first week of June. Um, we do it with my team. And then I also do some, uh, I'll do some things in between. So we have kind of a longer, you know, 20 to 30 minute podcast. And then in between, I might do some short takes on little marketing tips and tricks or interviews with uh, people in between. But it's going to be really fun. It's called, um, oh gosh. Now I forgot the name of it. Isn't that funny? Well, my <laughs> actually, no, first, I got it. <laughs> my several first podcasts had no name. I didn't have a name. So if you yeah. just start remembering yours, that's okay. Yeah. Well, it took us a while because it took us a while to come up with the concept and the name. But actually, the name of the podcast is called Off the Record Marketing Deconstructed. And actually, what we're doing is um, the How longer. Who I have to be to join that podcast, Marketing Deconstructed. Oh, you don't. It's fine. It's actually, okay. it's actually one of the things that we wanted to do. We work with so many clients and a lot of times our clients see us like this, right? We're having a conversation we're talking through their project, but what they don't see is the discussions that my team and I have behind the scenes. So they don't really get an understanding of how, um, how much the goals of our clients mean to us and how important it is, is for us to make sure that we're doing everything to elevate that client and do the best for them. And so a lot of the podcasts are conversations that we're recording behind the scenes of things that we're doing or things that we're working on or conversations that might be current events in the news. And we just start talking about them and actually it started because that's how we were. We would have conversations and we would just kind of digress into a lot of different topics or subjects or clients or things that we were working with. And I was like, we really should be taping these conversations because people could get a lot from them, but I think they could also understand that when you think that your marketing agency is not worth the money that you're spending, or they don't understand what you're trying to do, or it's only about one thing for you. You don't understand the care and the effort that the entire team puts into it. 
And so that's one of the things we wanted to show. And that's a great definition of deconstructing. It's not some abstract concept out in the thought world, but it's right. for real. This is mm -hmm. what we're doing behind the scenes. We care about you in the way we care about you. We want to show that to you. This is how deeply we talk about all the things we're dealing with. Right. Absolutely. That's a great concept. Now, yeah. I and think hopefully you're... people will learn from it, right? Because we talk about the ways that we do some things too. So yeah, watching people do their process, you can always learn something even though you can't maybe be as good at them at that, maybe mm -hmm. you get some tips of how to think through different problems. Absolutely. That's cool. Now, I think if people want to connect with you, they also can see you on Instagram. Is that true? What's that about? Is there oh, a yeah. event there? So, yeah, so we, Rhonda, um, Rhonda Marshall or Rhonda Vaughn, people know her. Um, again, if you're in the BDC or BYS community, she does some coaching for BDC and BYS. But she and I actually really connected when we first met um, in the BDC network. And then we actually ended up working with a couple of clients in tandem with each other and got to know each other that way. And then we decided that it would be really fun to do an Instagram live show. So we launched that, I think, sometime in April, beginning of April, maybe. And we go live every Wednesday. You can find her or us are live on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we go live on her channel, which is at the Community Cultivator, or my channel, which is at Jen White Official. And I want to also do it at Five and Rise. Um, we just haven't figured out how to get more than one channel live at the same time. So we're working on that. Um, but yeah, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. And we talk about we just have a conversation similar to this. And we really talk about relationships, community, marketing. And tomorrow, actually, we had um, a gal that was listening to our podcast who has a business. She's an entrepreneur. And she was asking questions about her brand. And I asked her to fill out our brand assessment on our website. She filled that out. And we're actually going to be going through that with her live tomorrow oh. at 1 p.m. So it might be kind of fun for people to see how we kind of break down the brand and show people how to fix it. Very cool. Now, if people don't see that live tomorrow, they'll be able to watch a video of it on yes. of those sites you mentioned. That's good. Absolutely. Yep. Good. All right. Now we are getting closer to the end of the podcast. Sure. And something I want to ask you. So I'm watching this podcast and I say, wow, I want to work with Jen White. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? I'm going to go to five and rise, but then what's going to, what am I going to do? How am I going to get to you? How are you going to know that I want to talk to you? What do I do? Okay. So you can reach out to me at Jennifer at five and rise.com is my email. You can direct message me on any of our social media channels. So if you go to at Jen white official or at five and rise, you can send me a direct message also on our Facebook page um, at five and rise. You can do that as well. On our website, you can fill out a contact us form and get to us. Um, and that's probably the best way to reach me. Awesome. Awesome. So it's not very hard. There's many ways to do it. And there's one simple way, go to the website, five and rise. What's the website? Five and rise.com. Okay. That's simple. No marketing or anything else. Five and rise.com. Nope. Yes. And they can fill out the form there and someone will get back to them. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Jen, do you have anything else you want to share with the wonderful audience that will be listening to you? All of the great things that you're saying about marketing here today. You know, I was thinking about that. And I, I think one of the things I, I was thinking about that I wanted to share was our podcast, but we kind of already did that. And so um, I think I just will leave everybody with this. I think it's, again, it goes back to showing the world who you are and living your life as a business or an entrepreneur as your authentic self, which goes back to um, not only creating your brand for your business, but creating your personal brand because the two will come together and actually give people the opportunity to get to know who you are and do business with you. And so I would leave that with kind of be authentic. That's a great message. If we can, it's kind of weird, all the study, work, and effort we have to put in to being authentic. Mm -hmm. It seems opposite of what right. it should be. 
Right. Yeah. But we're so, I always say, you know, we've got to unwind a lot of education in order to actually be authentic and get out in the world and share our true selves. Absolutely. And that's the biggest challenge. And I think, you know, especially in today's world with all the social media that we're seeing and we're seeing how other people are doing it and we think, oh gosh, they're doing it better than me, or I want to be that person, or I want to do it exactly like they're doing. I think you can learn and take those concepts, but people want to do business with you because if you're like the other person that you want to be like, why they're going to go do business with that person. So that's again, why I think it's important to learn all you can, but make sure that you are always true to yourself, your brand and the people that you work with. And people fear, well, people won't like me, but my message is, oh, I promise you, people will like you. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely will. Mm -hmm. So that's great. All right, Jen. Jennifer, you've been a great, I, I called you Jen twice in this. It's okay. Everybody okay. does. I wanted to check and see if you were going to like flame me after that for something. No, you can okay. call me whatever you want, as long as it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no right. bad words. <laughs> yes, no bad words. So Jen or Jennifer, those are both good words. So it's okay. Those are great. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, you've been a great guest. We've had a great conversation and I have more that I want to ask you about. So you might get a ping from me one day saying, hey, I want to talk about some other things. Would love like, to. for instance, I would love to do a show just on this one thing. Okay, what's that? Your business brand versus your personal brand. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do a show just on that where you could just help us all understand the difference. Sure. But not only in our heads, but practically speaking, what's the difference? Yeah, absolutely. We'd be happy to do that. That'd be marvelous. So think about that. We might do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'd love to do that. Part two, right? Part two. That's right. <laughs> oh, I got to say this is part one. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, listen, if you're watching this podcast, I hope you've enjoyed it. Jennifer's been a wonderful guest. If you want to learn more about what I do, at you can go to my website, prvocalcoaching.com. And there you can learn all about me. You can go to the blog site and there's lots of articles there. There's lots of little videos there that you can learn from. And down in the footer of the website, there's a join my email list. You can click that button, join my email list. And if you do that, you'll get access to my pretty short little video on three secrets to becoming a great speaker. So those are just some ways that you can connect with me if you're interested to do that. Other than that, Jen, any final words? I can't think of any. Just thank you. Thank awesome. you very much for hope, allowing me to do this with you. I hope you feel like you've had a chance to leverage your voice. I have. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for coming. Jen, say bye. See, now look, I'm going between Jennifer and Jen. I can't stop. That's Jen, okay. Jen, say bye. Bye, bye guys. Everyone. See, See you later. See you for now. We will see you again soon. Love that you're listening. Click the little like button. Do some of those things. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful week.